Hey, I'm going to have to pack that one. Mm. File it away because I ain't really there yet. Mm. Don't raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Most of us, most of, most of Christians, like it's, like it's, like, see, like it's because of, because of your effort you got saved. Mm. Wow. Now all of a sudden, in order for you to stay saved, it's going to be your effort. Mm. <laughs> the good news ain't the bad things about you. The good news is the good things about him. That's why it's good. I read and find good things. Instead of Psalms 103, satisfy your mouth with good things. I want to find out what's good, not what's wrong. Give us preachers that'll tell us what's good. Go ahead. That's why I struggle with deliverance. Mm -hmm. That's why I struggle with dealing with principalities and powers. It is a way, but there's a more excellent way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know we have to contend for the faith that was once delivered. That's why we need deliverance ministry. That's why we deal with curses. That's why we need to deal with the elephant in the room sometimes. Mm -hmm. But that is not the perfect way. That's not the more excellent way. Discovering the pearl of great price is the more excellent way. <laughs> got to draw near, you guys. Tell you now, we got to draw near. Next verse. You consecrate a new and living way and having a high priest over the house of God. Next verse. Let us draw near with a half heart. Sometimes assurance. Because <laughs> that's come on, y'all don't realize when we do something. We all draw, you know, we all draw near with a true heart. How do you get a true heart? When you get a changed mind. Yes. Every time you get renewed in the spirit of your mind, your heart all of a sudden becomes more palpable. And you're more sensitive. Then all of a sudden you go in certain circles, you see certain calamities and certain you get exposed to certain things going on, it pierces your heart. Yes, it does. Then all of a sudden, compassion comes out. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 worship is not measured in tears, but I believe one of the fruits mm -hmm. of worship is tears, yeah. brokenness, mm -hmm. consternation, mm -hmm. penitence. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, yes. compassion. Yes. When the last time you had a compassion bone in your body? I'm a king, I'm a priest. <laughs> go ahead, you titan. <laughs> titan. You. Go ahead, go ahead. So the true heart and the foolish of fans, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. This is all a part of the worship. This is all a part of the sacrament of worship. This is all a part where we relinquish our control of our lives and say, God, I'm going to take this bonus that I can approach you not with an evil conscience. I'm not coming to you in the presence of God with what's wrong. I'm coming to receive what's right. I want, I want the water that is able to purify my body. And that water is not baptism. That water is not baptism. You hear what I'm saying? Hey. That water is a washing of the water of the word where he said you are clean through the words I spoke to you. Yeah. So that's what's going to happen. So that's why we need to be around churches that are high level in the word. That the word is, you uh, hear what I'm saying? Uh, that the word is a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path. We need to be around word-based churches. Yeah. Kingdom centered, Christ centered yes. churches that's telling us that will be willing to lift up their voice like a trumpet to tell us this is the way. Walk you in it. That's what it's all about, saints. No, 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 no. No, sometimes pastors had to say, tell us church because we've been through a rough week. We had to sit, go to places like Psalms 34 and 3 and say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Come on, sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes I had to get up because we, even in worship I had to say, let us magnify his name. Amen. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Let there be a divine convergence. Let us labor together. Amen. Because why? You don't begin to worship God until you stop looking at you. I'm going to say that again. 
You don't truly begin to worship God until you stop looking at you. Don't allow your mistakes from keeping you from worship. The authority of heaven is on the tip of your tongue. Uh, people don't believe that. You see that? You see that? The church split. Uh, let me get back with you, Doc, on that one. Yeah, yeah. The authority of heaven is on the tip of your tongue. If you will consecrate yourself, if you will submit to the provision that has been supplied for you, we have to supply the Spirit on the inside of us. The enemy wants to shut your mouth because he knows that he can get your worship, he can get your destiny. That has been the battle. I told you. What will you worship? Do I worship God or do I worship my experience in God? I told you last week. Most of us are not worshiping God. We're worshiping our experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. Thank God for the different experiences yes. and the trajectory that is laid out in scriptures. You know, the trajectory of healing and deliverance and all these different prosperity. Those things are great, man. But I refuse to worship them. People ask me all the time, some of my ministry friends. I got new friends I'm picking up along the line. <laughs> but they want to know what I teach and what I preach and what am I adamant about, you know. You know I... <sighs> Those are wedges. Are you an apostolic? Are you a prophetic church or apostolic church? I hope not. We can do those things, but I just hope to God that that's not what they see. Right. <laughs> Ultimately, I have to tell them that where Christ is preached and lives are being changed. Yes. Yes. Ultimately, it's about Christ. Are y'all following me? Yes, sir. We need to get to the point where we're being, <laughs> we're trying to understand we've been consecrated a new and living way so that ultimately we can worship God. Amen. 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 Like, you know, we get to that point when we had an encounter with God, too. That's how we begin to change the, the backdrop of worship is having an encounter to God. I'm almost done, y'all. I know you're ready to go. But Luke 5 and 8 says something about Peter. It says, when Peter was toiling all night, and all of a sudden, he had a conversation. Remember the conversation? Mm -hmm. Jesus told him, he said, you know, you've been toiling. You know, he told Jesus that I've been to toiling all night. But nevertheless, that's your word. I like that nevertheless stuff, man. That's the one. You know, that's just so good. You know, that, Nevertheless, that's your word. I know what I've been doing all night. I've been doing some things wrong, and I haven't got the... Uh, uh, the fruit of my labors yet. You know what I'm saying? I have the increase has been kind of not where it should be, and I haven't had things to go correctly in my life. But he said, You know what? I'm going to take my focus off. Nevertheless, I'm going to change gears. And your words. I'm ready to do it according to your principles, according to your word. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Somewhere along the line. Then he said, It said in 5 and 8, when, Peter, <clears throat> when Simon Peter saw, because he, he, he toiled all night, but he, when he did it the right way, the way that Jesus said, to let down his net, mm -hmm. he let it down on the right side, he said, and then he fell down at Jesus' feet saying, depart from me from I'm a man, a sinful man. Mm -hmm. So, he needed a breakthrough, but he found out as he responded to God, mm -hmm. he discovered his true condition. Yeah. Because the center of worship is actually you discovering wow. your true condition. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not, this is not sad, Claw. Right. Uh, I'm still on good things. Right. 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 But we have to figure out where we're missing it. Yes. Yes. Where am I off? Yes. God don't want you running around for 12 years trying to figure out what you're missing. Yes. Come on. No, no. He's giving you his spirit mm -hmm. that searches all things. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And for things to begin to all of a sudden rise in your life, He's giving you clues. Y'all yeah. <laughs> know we got clues in Scripture that cause things that's missing to show up? Y'all know? Y'all Do y'all know? What it, he told us. He gave us some uh, guardrails. He said, this is how you do it. Yeah. Remember in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10? Remember over here? Eyes, yeah. ears, have not heard. neither have it entered into the hearts of men. But has revealed it to us by His Spirit. Then he didn't finish. <laughs> to them that love him. And love is 
demonstrated by your affections and worship. How you respond to God. As a result of you encountering God, things show up. Then you don't have to live in a foggy life. You don't have to live in a maze. You don't have to live hit and miss. He already told us in the Gospels, he said, if your father being evil yeah. know how to give you good things, yeah. how much more should your heavenly father give you good things? Yeah. Yeah. It ain't a bait and switch. He ain't, he ain't got to carry it before you trying to tell you. <laughs> My daddy ain't like that. There is a recourse. There is a system in place in scriptures. There is a culture called kingdom that you have to operate by in order to change your trajectory, to change your perception and your reality. If it's not implemented, you will remain in the same state. I'm sorry. I've had people say, well, you know, I, I, I'm trying to deal with my heart. You can't deal with your heart through giving. You don't deal with your heart through worship. Only. It's in worship that you can discover what's wrong and what kind of condition your heart is. Mm -hmm. But when you get up from there, you go, to, you go through the script. You go through the provision that's laid out in the scriptures. And you say, God, I need a promise. Because every promise has a provision. Yes. In order to unlock the promise and receive the provision, you need a principle. But I told you, you can't get neither one of those peas without process. <laughs> That's what we know we have a hard time with because we want to exclude process. Give it to me now. Oh, Lord, help us out. Huh? Y'all all right? Everybody breathing? 